here we go. Hey guys, today I'd like to do a lab with you in which you are going to take some observations of the element sodium, which I have in this container here. Now, sodium can be found on your periodic table because it is an element. It's made of only sodium atoms. Uh, it's number 11 and it's in this first column and all elements in this first column are referred to as alkali metals. So sodium is a metal, it's an alkali metal. We're gonna be exploring the physical and chemical properties of this element on the periodic table. What your job is, is to take good observations and we will use those observations to discuss this a lot throughout a chemistry unit. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see here, I got a little setup of some materials that I'm gonna be using in this lab today. And the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm going to want to make sure that I put on my goggles because there are some danger warnings, which I won't get into very much here, but right here, we can see that it is flammable. It has flammable gases, spontaneous uh, igniting, keep away from heat, spark, all that stuff. So probably would be smart to have my goggles on. And here's another sign that this stuff can be dangerous and we need to be really careful in how we handle it is check out how it's shipped, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and open this for you and you can just watch me open it. Here we go. All right, so this is sodium and as you just saw, uh, they're not messing around in the way that they ship sodium. They really want to make sure that this stuff doesn't have any contact with the outside environment. Uh, you'll notice that I first opened kind of the uh, tin can, and when I opened it, it was filled with kitty litter. That was all those kind of dry rocks that you saw in there. Then I had to unseal it from a plastic bag and slide out a jar filled with a liquid. And when I opened that jar, I removed uh, one of the blocks that was inside there. And this single block right here, this is sodium. This is what it looks like. Now that liquid that it was shipped in is oil, okay? Any moisture that comes into contact with sodium will cause the sodium to react. Kitty litter and oil are things that are meant to either absorb or repel moisture. So any moisture that could be in the air or in the surroundings cannot touch this stuff in shipment. All right, I'm gonna describe this for you in case you can't see obvious things here about sodium. It is a metal and you can kind of see it has metallic properties and that it has kind of shiny. And uh, some of that shine is coming from the oil that's on the surface. Uh, but it is shiny on its actual surface. Um, the, the exterior that we're looking at here, that means the outside that you can see, is kind of gray. While there's some silvery shiny parts, it's mostly kind of a dull gray. Now, it's really soft, okay? And when I'm feeling it and squeezing it here, I can put a little pressure, okay? And look at it, I can kind of squeeze it almost like really hard putty. Actually, the texture of this thing feels as though I'm holding like a, I don't know, like a, an eraser or something like that. You know how erasers kind of have a little bit of give to them? It's a little softer than that, but it kind of feels similar, okay? Maybe like a, a hard stick of butter after you've just gotten it out of the fridge and it's cold. Um, this isn't cold, but when it's still cold, butter is, is kind of hard, but it's also kind of soft in that you can kind of squeeze it and manipulate it. Anyway, that's how I would equate this to. All right, yeah, watch what happens when I scratch it. I'll scratch the surface, okay? Okay, scratch them off the surface there. Here's a little piece that I just pulled off of the sodium there. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but the part I just scratched is shinier than the exterior. So we're starting to get a look at the interior a little bit. Let me not lose that little portion. So you can see more of that. I'm gonna take a knife. I'm gonna actually cut it so that you can see the inside. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, the knife, like I said, it's like cutting through, I don't know, a hard kind of cheese block or butter or something like that, okay? Now you can really see the shine inside there. That is what sodium looks like on the interior. 
and it leads us to ask the question of okay why does the sodium look gray on the outside but a nice shiny silver on the inside and as you can see right here before our eyes the part that's getting exposed to the environment the air around it is starting to turn that dull gray color okay so um right away we have to ask ourselves the question is is it shiny because it's not exposed to air and if so what's happening with the air that's causing it to turn kind of a grayish color well uh, sodium is an oxidizer okay it reacts with oxygen and oxygen is a gas that as you know is pretty abundant in our atmosphere in the surroundings we we need it to stay alive we breathe it in with every breath we take and we exhale carbon dioxide because our body uses the oxygen well some materials react with oxygen okay a kind of a mild form of oxidation is when iron will rust when it gets wet it reacts with oxygen in the air it turns it turns into this kind of orange flaky uh substance called iron oxide that's when iron rusts anyway this is sodium and it is forming some new substance by reacting with the oxygen in the air okay so it's a little bit unstable actually it's a lot of bit unstable because it reacts with just our atmosphere okay all right now um other things uh color i've talked about texture i've um talked about um but let's talk about chemical properties now sodium reacts with water it's really really unstable okay it's only got one electron in its outer shell and that's what makes it so unstable and i showed you earlier the periodic table all of the elements in that first column if you find them by themselves which you won't in nature uh, because they want to um, give that electron away they want to bond with other more stable substances to create uh, things like oh for example sodium chloride which is NaCl it, it just means that uh, chlorine atoms or chlorine the element will bond easily with uh, sodium to form a new substance called sodium chloride and you know that as table salt okay I'm doing a lot of talking here let's see what happens when we react this stuff with water Okay, here we go. We got some water here, as you can see. I'm gonna take that little flake I um, cut off earlier and put it in the sodium. I don't know if you can see it kind of bouncing around down there and we're gone, okay? Let me cut off another piece and drop it in there for you. This piece looks a little big, so I'm not going to um, drop this one in there, but I just wanted to show you how shiny it is before that sodium is exposed to oxygen in the surrounding environment. Okay, I'm gonna actually Put that down to be a smaller size. Here we go. I don't know if you can see it. Almost looks like a little sphere. Hmm. And then it's gone. But take a close look at the water. We have some sort of powder starting to form in the water. You see it in there? We also had kind of a white smoke, okay? Now, I don't wanna breathe that smoke in. In fact, you can't see, but I have some windows open nearby and I have a mask on to kind of help keep ventilated here. Let's try that again. Okay, this one's a little bigger, so don't be surprised if we get some popping on this one. Okay, there you go. kind of scooting around on the surface of the water. It's not playing nice with the water right now. Okay, we're getting some of that white powder being generated, kind of leaves a wake behind it as it shoots around on the surface of the water. It's trying to get away from the water. We've got a lot of uh, some sort of smoke being released into the air here. And now it's gone. See our water starting to get cloudy with that white powder there. All right, now this is fun, but I want to take you outside and show you what this looks like on a bigger scale. Let's get some water. OK, 
Okay, you can see I got a bucket of water over there. I'm just gonna use the spoon to, at a safe distance, drop a larger piece of sodium in. Let's see what happens. Ready? Three, two, one. We got a quick pop there. Some of the grass is on fire. That's always fun. The grass is plenty wet and I have some pitchers of water behind me to put anything out that might start. Let's get a close look up there. This is what we have left. We have some melted mud and muck here. I'm sure the groundskeepers will be really pumped about me destroying the grass. We got a small piece of sodium kind of floating around in there. All right, well, let's throw some more in there and see what happens. Okay, now you can see I got two blocks in there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drop them into this water here, okay? Now you can't see into the bucket, but you can observe sound and you can see what happens from far away. Here we go. The reason you're seeing some fire and smoke there on the ground is because when it explodes, it happens so quickly, and uh, this is not a scientific word here, but furiously, that some pieces break apart off of there. It makes a very loud popping sound. In fact, it sounds a lot louder because the bucket kind of amplifies that. It's down in a kind of a fixed volume space. The walls of the bucket kind of serve as an echo chamber so a lot of that sound comes out the top and uh the same reason all that smoke comes out the top too okay all right so if you want to see more on sodium i do do a complete video on the chemistry behind what's going on when students were in my class from last year you can see those reactions on their faces and everything like that that video is popping up right now on your screen you can click on it and watch that if you want Thanks guys for watching and that's a little demonstration on sodium. See ya.